guys, it's CV Tomlinson here, and I'm sorry for all the crazy background noise you're probably hearing. I'm in my car driving to see my parents because if I'm gonna die in quarantine from the coronavirus, I don't want to die alone. <laughs> but basically, I want to come talk to you guys because, well, when I started this YouTube channel a total of two, three weeks ago, something like that. My intent was to help other aspiring writers develop their craft. And I wasn't really sure how I was going to do that. I knew I didn't want to be like every other writer channel on YouTube. Not that there's anything wrong with all the other writer channels out there. But they just seem to give a lot of advice and a lot of things they like and a lot of things they don't like. Which is all fine and good. But I... YouTube's kind of gotten a little oversaturated with that stuff, and so I knew I wanted to be a little different. I wanted to do something a little different that would genuinely help writers and give them, I guess, something they can work with. Because for me personally, at least, when I go on a YouTube video and I see a list of like the top 10 worst female archetypes, it's nothing I don't already know. I know... We're all sick of the damsel in distress. I know Katniss Everdeen has been duped more times than a Jeffree Star product. Like, this is nothing I don't already know. And it's not really anything that helps me personally. Now, maybe it helps some of you guys out there. And that's great. That's fine. That's good. But I wanted to do something a little different. So, yesterday, I'm in my apartment by myself with nothing to do. So I just started reading random articles on Google, as one does when they're stuck at home with nothing to do. And I came across this article about IVF. Why I came across this article, how I came across this article, and why I decided I wanted to read that. Why the topic of IVF was interesting to me at that moment, I don't know, because I'm not looking to have any babies <laughs> anytime soon. I'm enjoying that single life, honey. I'm enjoying having my little bachelorette pad and having everything to myself. I'm not looking to change that anytime soon. That's not saying I don't want kids in the future. I do, but I want to get a husband first and not anytime soon. That's neither here nor there, though. Um, so anyways, I started reading this article and I got a random story idea that I decided to play around with because again, stuck at home by myself nothing to do and the thought occurred to me that I don't think there's been a writer that has documented the process they go through from the conception of an idea for a story to the publication of the final product. Now maybe I'm wrong maybe there's a writer out there who has documented it live as they're doing it, their process, what they go through in writing a story. So I could be wrong on that. And if so, please leave links down below because I'm very curious, very interested to see that. But I don't, I've never heard of anyone who's done that before. So I thought, why not me? Why, why not I do that? Because maybe in watching me work through a story idea and developing the characters and the plot and putting everything together, someone can learn the rope, so to speak. Now, that's not to say I'm a master of writing. I mean, I have a good bit of writing experience. I've been writing stories pretty much since I learned how to read and write. I wrote my first book when I was 10, and in the 14 years since then, I've probably written close to 40 or 50 books. Now, none of them have been published and not all of them were good. Some of them were trash and hopefully have been destroyed. Probably not. I'm sure my mom has it on a flash drive somewhere. And when I become famous, if I become famous, fingers crossed, she's going to share it on social media and I'm going to be embarrassed out of my life. But anywho, all that's to say, I'm not a master of writing. I'm not this guru of writing who knows everything. I'm just someone with a bit of experience who has learned a few techniques and a few tricks that work for me personally and maybe work for you too I don't know 
maybe this will help someone, maybe this won't. I, I, I honestly don't know, but this is just an idea I came up with, and I'm going to give it a shot, because why not? So, anyways, so what's this crazy idea I came up with, this crazy story idea that I came up with while reading an article about IVF in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic that we're in right now? Uh, basically, there's been an apocalypse. I don't know if it's a pandemic, a worldwide nuclear war, zombies, maybe all of the above. I don't know yet. But there's been an apocalypse, and most of the human race has been wiped out except for 56 girls, 56 women, ranging from ages 15 to 25, who were taken to a bunker by this mad genius dude who somehow knew the apocalypse was coming. How he knew, I don't know yet. Probably involved in the government somehow. But he knew, and he brought these 56 girls to this bunker to keep them alive, along with these millions of embryos he stole from various IVF clinics as the world was ending. And you can probably figure out basically what happens from there. So, yeah, these 56 girls are basically tasked with the mission to repopulate the world via IVF. And that's as far as I've gotten in the plot so far. I know that's very vague, very basic bare bones. I have a lot of details and plot points that I need to iron out. But for this portion of the development phase, I'm actually going to put a pin in story right now. And I'm going to work on characters. Sorry, I had to catch my breath there for a minute. Phew. Phew. Forgot to breathe. Breathe, CV. You, you're, you're driving. You need to breathe. Anywho. Um, here's the thing. When you start working on developing your craft as a writer, you're going to realize that there are certain areas of writing you are naturally inclined to, that you're really good at. And other areas that you are <laughs> not so good at. And that's just how it is. You're not going to be fantastic at every single element of writing. That's just the thesis. Every writer has their Achilles heel. For me, I'm okay at coming up... Actually, I'm fairly good at coming up with unique-ish story ideas. I'm not like some crazy Dr. Seuss Lewis Carroll person who just comes up with all this off the wall stuff but I'm okay at coming up with ideas that are unique enough to be interesting but I'm not necessarily the best at spotting plot holes so I'll start writing a story and then I give it to someone to read and they said oh yeah that sounds good but what about this plot hole right here and I just kind of look at it and go like oh yeah that doesn't make sense so that's my Achilles heel there. I'm not very good at spotting or fixing plot holes. But what I am good at is character and dialogue. I'm pretty good at coming up with fun, unique characters who are interesting that people want to follow. And I'm pretty good at coming up with entertaining dialogue to go between those characters. That was a weird way of phrasing that, but you get what I'm saying. So, when I start developing a new story idea, that's where I front load most of the beginning stages of the work, is developing the characters. Because hopefully, once I get to the final product, my characters are fun enough and interesting enough and intriguing enough that even if I do drop the ball and leave a plot hole wide open there that doesn't make any sense, my characters will be good enough that the audience will kind of forgive it. And that's not to say I don't try to go back and fix any plot holes that might come up. I do. But that's a weakness I have as a writer. And so I try to make up for it in characters because I know that's a strength I have. And that's not going to be true for every writer. Maybe you're great at coming up with these crazy, unique, tightly written plots so tightly written you couldn't stick a pin through them. Good for you. I'm not that girl. <laughs> so, that, that that's an area I struggle with. But, anywho. So, now that I have a basic idea of what the story's going to be about, I know the general direction that the story's going to be in. I'm going to kind of put a pin in it. 
I'm gonna set aside for now and I'm gonna work on developing my characters. Now this story idea is a little unique because I already have a pretty much a set number of how many characters there were going to be at the beginning at least, which is 57, these 56 girls who this madman has taken and the madman genius who took the 56 girls. Now, Madman, because if things are going to go the way I think they're going to go, and they may not, the story might go a different course as I start working on it a little more. We'll figure that out when we get there. But if it's going the way I think it's going to go, the Madman's not going to be in it for the vast majority of the story. So I'm not going to really worry about him at the moment, but I am going to worry about these 56 girls. So, hmm. What I did last night is I made a list of names. I have a random name generator on my phone because I'm a writer and that's what you have on your phone when you're a writer. And I just click, 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 came up with 56 names and wrote them down. And then I went to a random name picker. There are a million of them online. You just Google random name picker and it will pop up and you just click on it and you enter as many names or as many things as you want. In this case scenario, I put the 50 states of the United States, the five territories of the United States that actually have people living in them, and Washington, D.C., and just click whatever one popped up. That's what went with whatever name was at the top of the list, and then click again, whichever one popped up that time. That's what went with the second name, and on and on and on and on and on. And then I went through, same concept, but instead of putting state and territories and city names in there, I put the numbers 15 through 25, because I decided that was the age range these girls were going to be in, and again, click, 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 determined the age for each of them. And that's what I did. So now I have a list of 56 character names, where they're from, and their ages. And now what I'm doing, and this is the part that's going to kind of take me a while, I'm going through and I'm creating a basic character sheet for each of them, which you'll see on the screen. And what these character sheets will have are the girl's name, her age, where she's from, her ethnicity, and then two zodiac signs. And you're probably thinking I'm a lunatic right now, but let me explain. So obviously basic information is something we need to know about our characters. We need to know their name when developing them, or at least I do. Maybe you're one of those writers, you don't assign names to your characters right away. You just come up with basic concepts for them and then name them later. I have ADHD, I confuse myself enough as is, so I need to make sure each of my characters have a unique name from the get-go so I can tell who is who, because if not, I will get them mixed up. Trust me, I've tried it before, I have mixed and matched characters and it's, it's been a mess. Actually, some of those characters that started off as two separate characters and then became one because of my crazy ADHD brain turned out to be a lot of fun, and they were a lot of fun to write, but still a chaotic mess that I really don't want to repeat. So I have to assign a unique name to each of my characters to begin with, and then their age, because your age will determine kind of your personality, because life experience is important, as well as the amount of life experience you've had. That's going to help shape you as a person. Ethnicity? Okay. So we all know race is a touchy subject, but... I mean, we have to talk about it because it's a thing. And no, race should not shape you as much as it does in our world today. Everyone should get equal opportunity, equal treatment, regardless of their skin tone or their ancestral heritage. But that's not the world we live in. And if you're going to write a story set in the real world, which this one is, it's just set in a post-apocalyptic timeline, then ethnicity is going to play a role in shaping your character and who they are as a person. And how I determined the ethnicity for this particular set of characters is I looked up the origin of the name, because I remember, I picked the names randomly, just put in random generator, American girl names, and you know, America's a melting pot, we got a little bit of everybody over here, so just popped up 56 American names, and then I looked up the origin on Google, and wherever this name 
originally came from. That helped me determine what the race was. So, I have all that basic info now. And then, and this is just a little trick that I developed. And I do this for pretty much any story I start writing now. I came up with this technique about three years ago and I've clung onto it ever since. Basically what I do is I assign a Greek and a Chinese zodiac to each of my characters and you're probably wondering, CV, why the heck are you doing that? Are you some crazy new age hippie? Well, no. At least I don't think I am. I, but here's the thing. Zodiacs have personality traits associated with them. So if you're an Aquarius, you're supposed to be like this. If you're a Scorpio, you're supposed to be like this. If you were born in the year of the rat, you were supposed to be like this. If you're born in the year of the tiger, you're supposed to be like this. Now, I don't know how much stock you put in them in real life. I don't put a ton of stock into them. I'm not really sure how much I believe in that stuff. All I know is Sagittarius is supposed to be the sign of the hot messes, pretty much, and I am a hot mess queen, so they got it right on that time. I fit... Now, all the Archer Centaur boys and girls are supposed to be hot messes, and I am definitely one of them, so you got that right, Zodiacs. Except that Sagittarius's Sagittarians are supposed to be extroverts, and I'm, like, super introverted, so that part's not accurate, but the rest of it is. Anywho, so, what I do is I will assign a Greek Zodiac to each character, and as you can see, written in the pink are the characteristics that go with that Zodiac sign. And then I assign a Chinese zodiac to each character, and you see written in green are these characteristics that go with that zodiac year. And then what you see in purple at the bottom are just my unfiltered thoughts based on those two lists of characteristics I have above me. What goes with the Greek zodiac sign, what goes with the Chinese zodiac sign, I just read them to myself, and then whatever pops into my mind, that's what I write down in the purple. It doesn't have to make sense at this point. It doesn't all have to go together. Sometimes, when you have a list of characteristics that don't go together, those make the most interesting characters. Because you got to figure out, okay, how do I make this all one cohesive person that somewhat makes sense? And those characters actually can be really fun to write in there. They're, they're a bit challenging, but, but I like a challenge, so it's cool with me. But anywho, and that's how I a foundation to start building my characters from because here's the thing when you start developing a character you need a good foundation to start from despite what some people might think you can't just come up with a character from scratch you need something to build upon and that something should be in my opinion at least who is this character at their core what makes them who they are as a person? What is their inner essence? What makes them tick? And this little trick I came up with, with the two zodiacs, that is what helps me get to that core of that character and give me something to build off of. Now, if you go online and look up character development exercises, You'll come up with all sorts of random generators and questionnaires and character sheets. And if those work for you, go it on you. Those never worked for me. Because again, I need to know at the core who this person is. And then I can build from there. I work outwardly with my characters. Meaning I need to know who they are on the inside. And then I start building from there. Uh, some writers, I do know some writers, they start outwardly. They figure out exactly what this character looks like and then start filling in the inside based on that. And if that works for you, great. That doesn't work for me. So, that's pretty much as far as I've gotten thus far. I think last night I came up with 17 character sheets and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through make these character sheets for all 56 girls and then I'll make one for the madman <laughs> and then what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll read through all the girl profiles and I'll pick out a select few to be a part of the main core cast because you can't have a core cast of 56 characters you're gonna need a small group that takes the majority of the plot on. Uh, I don't care what anyone says. 
having a huge ensemble cast is tricky. It's not impossible to do it well, but it is tricky. And the way you do it well is you have a core cast. You have your ensemble cast, and then you have your core cast. So I'm creating my ensemble right now, and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick out who I want in my core cast. Now, I already have one core member figured out. Her name is Rose. She's Italian-American, and she's a Scorpio. And just something about this character is speaking to me. I don't know what it is, but I like this character, and I know I want her in my core group. And sometimes that happens for me. Sometimes as I'm developing this first basic foundational character sheet, I'll already be able to know, okay, this person's going to be a core member. Sometimes I have to go back through and read the sheet two or three times before deciding, okay, yeah, this person is going to be a core character. But, yeah, uh, it just depends on the situation, I suppose. But uh, Rose is definitely going to be in the core cast, so I'll put a little blue star at the top corner of her page so when I go back through I remember okay yeah she's a core member and yeah that's pretty much as far as I've gotten thus far like I said I only came up with this idea yesterday so I'm barely into it right now this story is still in its infancy stage not even infancy stage it's like still in its mama's belly stage (laughs) hadn't even fully been born yet just was conceived but yeah that's pretty much all I have right now sorry the quality is not that good like I said I'm driving to see my parents and my car is about 21 years old it is the clunker I had a college and I've been saving up to get it replaced but I have not replaced it yet hopefully I will soon though because this this poor baby needs to retire she's She's she, she seen better days. Time to put her out to pasture. But, yeah. We'll see how this goes. I'll post more videos kind of documenting the process through which this story grows and becomes its own thing. And hopefully this will help somebody or at the very least entertain somebody. So, uh, yeah. That's all I got. See ya.